feeling exhausted, drained, feeling like you don't want to work and teach anymore, then this video is for you. I'm Tanya. I'm an English educator and a communication coach. I've taught around 500 students all around the world. And in this video, I'm going to speak about a very sensitive but very relevant topic for every English teacher, emotional burnout syndrome. What is emotional burnout? Like many people know what it is already. It's the feeling, it's the state of extreme exhaustion, feeling of being worn out due to a lot of stress. Many people who work with other people and especially English teachers who work with a lot of students and work from morning till night every day, have a lot of students, have a lot of work, can experience this pretty often. When I experienced this for the first time, it was about five years ago and no one was talking about this syndrome, no one knew about this phenomenon. That is why when I was drained out, I decided that teaching is not for me and I should give it up. <laughs> Which was not the right decision, but I really stopped teaching for about six months. So six months I was recovering mentally so that to start educating people again and started working with people again. It was pretty hard and now I know what it is like, what it feels like and in this video I want to share with you how to define that you have it, how to prevent having it and what you can do if you are already having emotional burnout syndrome. If you wake up and you don't want to do anything. You had satisfaction from your job before. You gladly came to your students, you started classes, you created new ideas and new lesson plans, but now you don't want to do this at all and every student feels like a burden. That's when you realize you are emotionally burned out. So what can you do when you already have it? The first thing, of course, taking relaxation time and this is very important because I know that if you already have this <laughs> emotional burnout syndrome that you probably a very responsible teacher and you probably like working really hard or you need to work really hard that is why to say no to all your students for at least one week can be pretty difficult but you should understand that like you are your main value and you cannot give anything to your students unless you are feeling empty inside. That is why like first of all you need to like refill this emotional state so that to go and teach again. Otherwise like two, three, four weeks later it will come back again even though you can try really hard and work really hard. So how you can do this so that you will not feel guilty for taking this relaxation time? You can actually honestly text or call your students and say that you need some time for yourself maybe you're developing your new product or you want to reconsider your teaching method and so on and explain yourself and tell them that like one week later we can get back to the classes. Usually students are pretty okay with that because all of us understand how emotional condition is really important. After that, what you can do is of course doing something that can refill your emotions. First of all, you can do nothing. <laughs> Just be <laughs> relaxed and do nothing for at least a couple of days. My boyfriend calls this uh, state like hermit mode. <laughs> So I do absolutely nothing. I watch TV series and whatever. But at this moment, I kind of get a lot of relaxation and I can do after that something way more. Then take the rest of the time so that to do things that will refill you emotionally. For example, going to massages, spa, I don't know, going for walks, eating good food, meeting your friends or not meeting anyone, whatever works for you. Track your own condition because we're all different and track what will give you the most power and energy after that. And what is more important, set your goal for this time. Otherwise, you will be just chilling for one week without doing anything and it will give you absolutely nothing. You will come back to work even more exhausted probably and even more not willing to work at all. Set the goal, what you want to get from it. Maybe more inspiration, maybe new ideas, maybe new lesson plans, maybe just like relaxation itself. So set the goal so that at the end of this week, you will feel like 
like, yes, I completed what I really needed to complete and you can get back to work with new ideas and with new energy. But of course, to prevent this condition is way easier than to treat it afterwards. Because if you are in the state which I described at the beginning of the video for a long time, one week might not be enough, to be honest, and maybe you need like something longer and uh, maybe some extra help and whatever. So that is why prevention of this emotional burnout is way more important and way easier to do. So what can you do? First of all, again, track your emotional condition. What takes this energy from you and what gives more energy to you, including the students that you work with. And I would say that's the biggest thing that you should think about because you cannot teach anyone. You cannot get pleasure from working with anyone. That's just not possible. You already know, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> which student gives you more energy and which sucks you and drains you out. So please be honest with yourself, sit down and write the list of the things that like drain you out every day, which work drains you out, which student drains you out and say no to this. And believe me, once you say no to the student who takes the most energy from you, you will get a new one. Don't worry, you will eventually get a student who will be way better. Your main task is to get pleasure from any work that you do and from any student and any person you work with. Apart from that, track how many classes you can handle, how many students you can handle all in all. Like if for now you feel this emotional burnout, most probably that's not the right number of students that you can handle. Track, check, think, reconsider your work, and also reconsider your pricing accordingly because maybe you charge too low you get too many people to work with it drains you out and you think that it's the right thing to do but no it's absolutely not the right thing to do it should go up like in an opposite way in an opposite direction first you think what comfortable is for you what gives you energy what gives you the biggest pleasure and then you think who you want to work with, how much, how many classes, how many hours per day, per week. And according to that, you put the pricing, of course. So these were my tips, which I personally did when I experienced emotional burnout. And please check yourself how happy you are with your work right now. And if not, Check this video again, think what you might use so that to start feeling better already tomorrow because you shouldn't give up teaching. If you really love doing this, if it's the passion of your life, so keep pursuing your goals, keep enjoying, keep doing this with a lot of passion, but think about your condition and your emotional state way more than about your students, your work or anyone else. You are the focus, you are your own focus. Focus. And if you want to be in this profession for a long time, long term and stay happy and satisfied, use the tips from this video. If you have any experience with emotional burnout syndrome as a teacher or any person who works with people and stresses out a lot, please drop your comment below and share your experience and hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and see you in the next one.